good to remember. Yeah. I'm gonna share screen. I love it. This is my friend, Captain Kurt, or Kurt, Captain Norton, the love coach, the star, um, star alchemist. But we just call him the the love alchemist. So he's gonna do some live readings tonight. But we had a question. Can you monetize love? Like a lot of people want to, you know, relationships, but it seems like most people in their relationships, a lot of times it's really based on money. And if the person doesn't have enough money or give enough money or however that works, um, can you really, can you really call it a relationship if the focus is money or is it a relationship if the person doesn't have any money, a lot of people are talking about too, um, they want a high value person, uh, people who make off a hundred K or more, but what do you offer to the person who has, you know, a six figure income? Are you a six figure person? You know, how does it work? Does it work both ways? And uh, is it even, is it fair to, to ask for that when you don't have much to give in return? So, Introduce yourself, Kurt. I am, I am the love alchemist, the star alchemist. You know, I like to put those. I got multiple hats. I got multiple aliases. So yeah, for now, I'm going with the love alchemist. And <laughs> can you monetize or can you go by what someone else's value, like money? I would say yes, because if that's what you're looking for. And if that's what you're going by, then you should stick to those principles of looking for that. But you, like a real relationship, can't um, stick to that. That that can be a foundation. Like the foundation should be what we're both bringing to the table, and what can we? The potential should be there. Like, are they ambitious? Are they a business person? Are they? Um, more improvement can they handle the money because if someone's coming with no money and they're gonna um be with someone with no with money can the other person handle that money or can the other person handle that person with the money because it's only gonna be about money if you're basing it on that like who does what like who pays what and then it's just going to falter when it's an issue because they're gonna be like oh this is my money and you can't tell me what to do with my money. If there's like a big purchase, like a big purchase, like a boat or like a house or like a car, then those things matter. Like whose money is it? Or like if there's an argument and is they gonna blame the money. So if you're basing the love off money, then you're gonna base the negativity on money. So it's gonna um, come back around. Now, if it depends on the mindset of the, the people, it's all mindset. If the person with love, if the person with money wants love, but the person with no money or like little to no money wants the money and not love, then the person with money is going to be used by the other person. So that's why some people want a safety net for themselves. Some people are looking for sugar mama sugar daddies and that's okay because that's their prerogative but make the other person know that and some people are good with it some people are good with you them having all the money and the other person don't and they just like give them money but they have separate accounts and they have separate things that's where like the, the it gets sticky when you try to like put it together like have one bank account or one thing in the name, especially when you get married. That's what, what some people get married. Marriage is like a business because you merge into um, corporations and entities together. So that's like a business tra transaction. And I think people look for money and love because what happened in their childhood, they probably didn't have that person their parents didn't have money or their father didn't have money or the month or something happened. It was like, there was lacking something. So now they, they got older and said, okay, I want to be stable. I want this person with money, but I can't get the money. So 
in order to get the money, I'll go to someone who has it and that'll be their ticket. That'll be their meal ticket to the money, but it won't be happiness. It'll be unfulfilled. It will be lacking. It'll be, it won't be whole because they're still looking. They're still looking outside, outside, outside. If you rely on anyone for, if you rely on anyone outside for your happiness, like money, person with money, you're going to be unhappy because you're, you're not going to have it. it. It makes sense that you would have your own money. Who, I don't know. It's like a pressure of if you, if you're the person without money, you're the person who, it's almost like you have to ask permission for everything. Yeah, you're gonna have to like ask permission, like, oh, can I use this or can I um, use that? Like, can I purchase this? Or you're gonna have their credit card, they're gonna have their cards and they're gonna just gonna be swiping. I mean, some people are like that, you know, those millionaires, billionaires, they give the wife the, the card and they just go and shop and they just take care of the kids at home. And, but, you know, you know, the quote unquote, some of them cheat and stuff like that because you know, because they got money and they just do whatever they want. They got the power. I think it's the power. It's more of a control. It's a control aspect. And the person with, without the money, I think they're going to always feel lack. They're always going to feel like they're um, without something unless their mindset is, can we build this together? Can we take this money and start my own business and invest in myself? Right. Now that's where the that's where the mindset changes. Yeah, it definitely doesn't feel the same as a partnership. I know I don't have anybody permission for nothing. <laughs> brother, um, brother L is here. Peace, guys. Peace. Hey, How hey, you peace. doing? Good night. Apologize for my lateness. He's here from Canada. 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 Yes, go. Yeah. Canada. You wanted to add something, bro? Oh, no. I just wanted to say good night to everybody. All right. Good night. I'm very interested to hear what you got to say, man. I'm, I'm liking what I'm hearing so far. Sounds sounds quite enlightening, man. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, they got that movie Love Don't Cause a Thing and... Uh... But some... But, but here where it is. Like, the people with money, they lack love. So they will go to someone who can give them that love. And it doesn't matter what status they have. It doesn't matter what they have. And they'll, they'll base it on that love. Cause I've seen that happen. It's, it's like they really love that person. If loves you or not. It's harder to tell if the person loves you or not. Yeah, the, yeah. It, well, it depends on the actions. Depends on what they be doing. It depends on the actions. Depends on the feeling. Cause you can't, you can't fake, um, the vibe, you can't fake feelings, you can't fake the connection. Because sometimes, well not all the time, but sometimes the person with the money, they lack love and they don't know how to connect with people because, or they can't trust people because they, everybody wants their money or they everybody wants something from them. Even it's just a little bit, they, they just, they overprotective so they, they look at relationships like as a partnership thing. Like, what can like you bring that I lack? I you think it's a balance. Be more of a representative. Like, if 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 I'm a dentist and I own my own practice, then and you know I'm gonna socialize with certain people. Can I take you outside? <laughs> you know, you're gonna offer certain things too. Like, okay, you know this person, maybe you can teach my kids another language or can you, you know, are you going to be able to be a stay at home mom or you do my kids still have to go to school and you get to go spend money and I have to do everything to take care of you or what are you giving back in return? Yeah, it depends on the dynamic. A household, can you manage a household? Can you manage a business? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends on the dynamic mm -hmm. and depends on where you're heading. I where what's the de what's the destination like they could go on, they could take trips they could um go places but like you said can you mingle with my people 
they gotta be secure with themselves. They gotta like level up mentally to even get a person like that because you can't value yourself off of what you have. Now, even if the person value themselves off what they have, they not value at all either. So you gotta set your value to your standards and not based off material things. So it, it go it could go either way. I see it on on all levels. I agree with that. So I, I wonder is is a limit too on children? What's the limits with love and children when you're taking on people who have children already? Oh, children. Yeah. If they have children, then you're gonna have to love children. You're gonna have to know how to connect with them and not um, be like, oh, they here already. You gotta love, you gotta really love children. You gotta like really take them as yours to be with someone with children. Because if you kind of disconnect and saying that they are, you know, like kind of like in a way or they always here, they always, it's like that energy, they gonna feel it and they're not gonna like you. And you, you're automatically going to dismiss yourself from being with that person, especially that person is a children person. Like if they like all about their kids, you got to like mesh with their kids before anything. So. Wow, and I've seen people too that were like jealous of your kid. Yeah, jealous. You love your kid so much. I'm like, I'm supposed to. <laughs> can, I, can I say something on that? Yeah, man. To be honest, I'm in that exact same situation right now, just not me. My kids are experiencing that right now. And it's due to uh, like religious, uh, religious, you know, standards of, of following through the religion. So mm -hmm. there is not that he rejects them, but he's, he's not trying to father them mm -hmm. type of thing. So to me, from what I know, that... When you take the woman, you know, you take the kids too. It's a package deal. You can't just say, I got, you know, I got you and whatever you make for me is all good. It doesn't work that way. It never works that way. So to me, I, you know, and I spoke to this man and we understood each other. I respected him. You know, as another man, that's the way he's doing it. It's cool. He's not mean to them or anything like that. So it's all good. But I agree that it's it's a whole deal, man. You got to take everything. You got to take it all. You got to love the kids too, man. And they definitely will feel that energy, 100%. And they'll talk about it too. Yes, they will. But some people, on the flip side, they get with a, a person, a woman, a man, and they, they treat the person over their kids. I've seen that situation before as well. Mm. They would like really neglect them. They would really treat them. They'll listen to the, the person over the, the children. Like they would choose whoever they would over the children. Like I, I've seen it before. And then because the person is treating them badly or like the they are, I don't know, it's just like they heal, they need healing. When you, when you try to choose someone over your children, like well being. So I've seen, I seen, I seen that as well. Yeah, it's hard to imagine, but it, I guess it's, I don't know, is it operating out of lack? What is it like that? Um, I was desperation, desperation. And I was listening to I agree. a video about stoicism yesterday, and it's like, you know, take away everything you had, and if you didn't have it, you'd be you'd be desperate for what you don't have, right? Yeah. So you're not even appreciating what you have. So you're always saying, I know one thing I said, oh, we got to stop saying, I can't wait. No, you can wait. Enjoy the moment right now. Enjoy what you have right now. And learn to, learn to love what you're doing right now. And, you know, stop being to this point where it's like, oh, my God, everything is so much better if I only had, if I only, you know. Because look at this. You're right. Because look at this. What, what do we do? All right. We want something. Right. But what do we do when we get it? We like enjoy it for like a maybe like a few hours or even minutes. And then we throw it to the side. You're like, oh, OK. 
Then we throw it to the side and focus on something else. I agree. Crazy. That's true. That does happen. Or can I add to that? We yeah. get it. And then you don't even know what to do with it. Oh, yeah. True. <laughs> don't even know what to do with it. You want That's it. like with money. I, I believe a lot. I believe everybody experiences that. We yeah. all manifest things that we want 100%. And they come to us. And a lot of times, most often, we don't know what to do with it when we get it. And then we end up messing it up. And then turn into whoever we believe in as the higher power and almost even possibly blaming them. Like, wait, you didn't even send it to me yet. But no, you got it. You just didn't know what to do with it. Or when you did get it, you destroyed it in Mm. various different ways. Yeah. That's that's those relationships. They get a they actually a good person. They get a good person. They don't know how to handle it. Because they never handled it before. They never had it. They're not used to it. It's true. It's true. Um, I was talking to someone about dating the other day, and I, and I described it as like getting pricked. Like, you're going to get, there's going to be some pain in that. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I wish you no pain. I said, that's going to be impossible. There is no way to, to participate in this without some pain. This is yeah. There's going to be some endurance. There's going to be some pain. Even you, you have pain in your friendships. The only difference is you can hang up on that person <laughs> or you don't have to yeah. live with that person or, you know, you could always draw back and maybe that person notices or maybe they don't notice. Maybe you guys discuss it, but, you know, the stakes aren't maybe as high, but there's going to be pain in it. Yeah. And that's where the other person could come in. Like if you're in a relationship and you're kind of like need a little bit of healing, the other person can heal you, like if they take their time. And if you're doing the work as well, and if you're not just reacting to a lot of things and running away and doing like the toxic things that people kind of do, and a lot of stuff, what happens is they blame the new person for what the old person did. Definitely feel that I feel like people have recycled arguments. Like you're not arguing with me, you're arguing with your ex-wife or whoever, whatever. (laughs) Like you're not arguing with me. I wish people would just say anything to create this huge uh, pain for you that Mm -hmm. required this reaction. So I've actually literally said that to someone before. Like you're not arguing with me. People should just pay attention more when they're when they're arguing what they're really arguing about. And especially, are you having a negative type of argument? Are you having a health? Do you have healthy arguments? Which your arguments aren't really arguments, just arguments. It might be more of a little debate about what you're you're disagreeing about. You know, it's it's you're just, you're speaking to each other properly, in a healthy way. Yeah. And not bringing up old stuff. Yeah. Definitely some not people, doing that. Some people live in the past, and they not. And I made a I made a post saying, um, when you try to kind of heal someone, you take on their baggage. Like sometimes we try to be somebody's therapist. Like, oh, how was your childhood? How was you growing up? And we kind of take on that their burdens when we kind of do that, and not be in that moment. Like, say if they healed, and they on your vibration. I think we don't really need to know how they grew up in like the problems and stuff like that. If we just being in this moment and enjoying them right now, cause we kind of take on their burden and, and then kind of look at them like, mm, you kind of change how you look at them. And then some people use that as a weapon as well. That's true. I think we're used to doing that, at doing that summary, like how'd you grow up? How was your childhood? And then kind of using that, um, allowing that to be an excuse because you feel sorry for people. You're like, oh, I know he had it so hard. And it's like, okay, yeah, but that was 25 years ago. That, you know, at our age or my age, you'd be like, that's 30 something, 40 years ago. <laughs> so we can't mm-hmm. really use that as an excuse. You've had enough time. And if you still need some time, you need to go handle that today, um, you know, Find you someone mm-hmm. to help you with that today. Don't bring it to me. I didn't, you know. Yeah, and a, a lot of people, they do that. To, uh, I think subconsciously to figure out them or try to fix them in a way. Like, do they need fixing or do they need this? Because some people are in that energy of fixing someone. But if they healed already, you don't need to know the backstory of how they grew up. 
So you think it's okay for people to be trying to heal each other in a relationship? I guess for me, I just yeah. Don't. It depends. It depends. It depends if there there's a there's a positive healing, mm -hmm. and there's a, a toxic trauma bonding. Mm, trauma bonding versus okay, got it. So explain All right, the 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 trauma bonding is okay. Y'all share the same um, traumas. Y'all said y'all share the same toxicness. Y'all love to fight. Y'all love to argue. Y'all love to just go back and forth, and y'all love doing that. Y'all love that kind of energy. Y'all love the running back and forth. Y'all love the fighting. Y'all love the arguing, and then y'all come back together. That's like the the trauma bond that um, people love. They love the toxic stuff. But on a healing thing, it's like, okay, they need a little bit more healing, like their hearts are open, but the conversation, the connection is healing them from deep within. So they're not showing signs of toxicness, it's just they're open and they can feel the love, they can feel the healing and not they're not triggered. They could have open conversations. They could um, point out the triggers. They could point out what's bothering them and healthy conversations and support systems. That's a healthy way of healing each other. Yeah. You know, because I, I had a thought like this, like if I, if I dated someone and they were a fitness instructor, I wouldn't want to go to them to be my fitness instructor. I would want to go somewhere else to get that done because I don't want that person to be like constantly on me, like being that. Oh, no, it's not like that. Oh, it's not like that. It's a, it's a natural thing. It, no, because we talking right here is healing. Like I could talk to someone and it's healing mm. and we're not purposely doing it is just a natural energy some people energy is just healing energy i, I noticed you just yeah. be around someone and it's like healing energy like i got the healing energy like if someone's around me or i'm talking they can feel the heal healing energy because it's love it's love you know you From heal through love story. you heal through love like mm. Okay, good. And I, I was like, I'm not trying to do it. No, we're not being the therapist. Oh, we're not like, a yeah, it's not a job. No, no, no. This is a natural flow. It's a natural flow. It's not like, uh, like staying on top of them and listening out there and stuff. And we working on this. And no, it's not. It's none of that. I know what you're talking about, brother. It's the same thing with me, man. It's the same yeah. thing with me. People tell me that they feel it when I speak to them. It's like we speak. It's not even like we do we speak life into people literally yeah and when they come near us and their vibration isn't always on that positive level if they're coming to us looking for you know a safe place we give them that we remove yeah. what they're we remove whatever ailments is you know in is interrupting their vibration and bring them that peace that they've been they've been looking for and they usually do like coming back because and we can and sometimes and me personally, I feel tired with certain people. That's mm. why I know that they just needed my energy and they were draining me. You see, there's vampires, of course. You know, there's negatives and positive ones, you know. Yeah. And if I'm helping somebody like that, that's great. I'm down for it. You know, you could take that if you need it, as long as it's going to bring you that peace you need. So I definitely understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that sounded scary to me because you said draining you, so... That, I mean, that sounds like you got to protect yourself, too, at the same time. You never want to be always giving the energy and, and not, you know? I agree. I agree with that. But for me, what recharges me is knowing that I'm, fi I'm helping them fix whatever they need to be fixed. Yeah. That's a recharge for me. Mm. Yeah. Like, when I heal someone or when I'm around someone, I never feel drained. I never felt drained. Even though I'm, I was healing them, I never felt drained. Like, to, like, um, well, we got some real powerful people out there, then. Yeah. Right, you know, and it, and it might be your heart is sinking into the person that that there's a lot of emptiness. That it just seemed like you might need to protect yourself. I would tell you this: I used to get acupuncture, and I was dating someone that was like. Uh, yoga instructor they were fitness and all this and just 
holistic and I would just think like oh this is so great this, and, but then I noticed when we would have conversations a negative conversation I was getting short of breath and I would be like oh, you know my you know I'm starting to actually my chest is starting to hurt and and then the person thought I was just running away from the conversation but I'm like literally my body is in pain and then um when we tried to break up my chest started hurting and I thought Oh, is it breaking my heart? That's what I thought it was. When I went to acupuncture and talked to my doctor, he said, no, that person was reversing your chi. Oh. Oh my goodness. Is this person the energy vampire? Like they're, cause you know, literally you should not be in physical pain. You, you shouldn't be losing, you know, getting short of breath every time you have a conversation, a negative conversation or having to work through something, you know? So have you seen anything like that? Because, I mean, I tell people and they're like blown away. I never seen anything like that. Um, acupuncture, like they just reversing your chi and just draining and the energy. Acupuncturist was the one who told me because he, he, he was the one who told me because he was like the healer, really into like Eastern medicine and stuff like that. But he said that that person, when he was like slowing down my chi or he was, he was, a, he was manipulating your energy. He was manipulating your energy. Like he could manipulate your energy because he's like the per the people who are like deal with like holistic healing and stuff like that. They they could heal and they could take away because mm. it's it's a both it's a open end like it's a positive and a negative. So right. he know how to do energy. So he every time he's around you, he probably like takes some of your energy and manipulate you. And you probably feel like, you know, not yourself. So I've seen that before. I never uh, was around that, but I heard of stories like people taking the energy, they always drained and they they don't, they don't know why it's happening. And then when they get away from the person, then they heal, they like, okay, it, it was that person that was um, draining them. Yeah, it reminds me of Bleach. They got a characters on there that are called a Soul Reaper, and it puts a hole and they put a chain through your heart, and it's called a Soul Reaper. So it reminded me of that. <laughs> mm. But I've heard of having a vampire. I don't know. Uh, oh, that's like a soul tie. That's like a soul tie. If you like, if y'all in that connection, connection, that soul tie, they, that could drain you as well. They could not even be around you, and they could still drain you. They could still tap into your energy. They could come in your dreams. They could come in the astral realm. They could do a, a lot of stuff. Like, especially if they highly skilled, they could always tap into your energy whenever. And so that's different from the um, sexually transmitted demons. I'm gonna keep- Oh yeah, that's different, that's different. <laughs> yeah, that's different. You need to know this stuff is real. Like you're wondering what's going on with your energy. You become sporadic and, and you're like, why is things, you know, now that I'm with someone, things are starting to change in my life. Yeah, change for the bad because they draining you and you don't know and you like, and you, you, you're trying to fix it and you like, it drain your money. It could, it could drain your job. You could lose things like, and they, and you see the other person, they get in the money, they get in the, the business, they get in the, the cars, they get in everything. And you looking like you're looking different, but you you holding on to the love though. That's what we love. That's what the love is blind, and they not um, knowing your own energy. That's why you got to study your own energy before you get with anyone because you could tell the difference between your energy and their energy. Because sometimes they can make you um, think negative thoughts. They can make you feel depressed. They can make you feel sad and crying out of nowhere. You like why am I like this? Even happy or or joy or something like that. It's just like your energy is off and you can't really operate like that. You can't um, move around like that because you're going to be up and down. So I experienced that before, like connecting with someone and we was not together. My energy was all over the place because Ooh. their energy was all over the place. I'm like, all right, I got to like really disconnect from this person. It was, it's like people are connected on astral realms in the spirit realms and even when you're not together you could block them and they still connected to you 
because they, they be coming in your dreams and they be, it's like ties are still there. So if you try to block someone and you try to do all this stuff, you got to like really cut some cords and some people are assignments as well, so. Mm, assignment. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm very leery of if, 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 if I'm starting to have bad luck or, or luck or things are starting to change and I'm losing objects. If I start to lose objects, even if um, even if when my memory is starting to get off or something like that and I become more cloudy and stuff, I'm like very leery of the changes in energy, so. Mm -hmm. Very, very and well. I also experience like even if you're connected with someone and they pass they um pass away and stuff like that, they those people are still connected. Let me tell yeah. you, I experienced that. Like I, I um had experienced it with a woman. She and like her husband wasn't there, and I would see I would see him. I was like, oh, coming into my dreams and stuff. Like that. I'm like, okay, they still have that connection. So some people, some. Hey, the voice thing went out. Oh, it's so oh. weird. Where you at, Kurt? Somehow you you got muted. Yeah, oh. okay. so you said, um, yeah, he was appearing to you now because he was attached to her and now he's appearing. Yes, so no matter what, like that happened to a, a few times. I, it happened two times, like, once I became spiritually aware with someone I was with and they, um, their husband, well, their boyfriend, I think their boyfriend passed like years ago, years ago. But once I was aware spiritually, I saw that per I like was feeling that person around. I'm like, oh, so they, they really didn't leave. So I'm like, oh, okay. So people are still sticking around even after life, like, like. So you gotta like really be wary with people because they do protect them. If you do, they they got protectors. So what would you suggest like people um, before you start a relationship like cutting cords or um, yoni egg or spirit bath? Like I've heard people talk about doing spirit baths and. There's a, you can do spirit bags. Yoni egg too. I think that's why women use a yoni egg. Yo, yeah, I, I don't know that that field. Um, yeah, I really don't know that field. But. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the spiritual bath and the affirmations and the writing and the actually um, feeling the your love can cut cords. Like self practicing self love can cut cords. Cause you're healing from the people that you have cords with. You are trying to like cut them out. And how so, do you do that? What 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 would you suggest a person to do that? What would you suggest for me to do to cut cords with the toxic ex of mine? The toxic I was ex with him. I was with him for since from fourteen to forty one. We've been mm. broken up for. Um, uh, a little over, I'm 43. So we've been broken up for like almost two years. Um, mm -hmm. I just found out right after we broke up three months later, he was married. But now that he's married, um, he's been coming for me, like mm -hmm. texting me, calling me. And this is his pattern. This is what he do ever since we was kids. It was always another person that he put before me, but it's like he reaches out to me because he's never satisfied with these women, but he never, he, it's like all my life, since I was a little girl, I took care of this man, like, but mm -hmm. it was like the only time, we, the reason why it lasted for so long is because of the little love that I had for him and he was my first love. So off and on, from 14 to 41 um I always thought it was like a tit for tat and that's why we always was like going back and forth but it's like 
what I realize now is that when we would hook up, it would be because he's he been the fell off. Like mm. his world will be like he go from it's like he uses me to get to get to get him back to where he he was before it's like when i'm with him he's doing well but be, but um well i'm re, i'm repairing him and fixing him and then he gets on his feet and then he uh do things to make me leave him then i leave him he end up with another woman and now they're doing great at this point i don't put my all into the to the relationship my money my mind my everything to get this relationship well to get him to where he where he needs to be and yeah. then I'm left on the side of the curb now that he's where he's supposed to be he's up and now I'm drained and down mm. and then I see that psycho coming back around again because I think something must be going on between him and his wife um because that's the only time I start to hear from him and when he comes back into my life and try to play games again. And, and that's when I am I know in my heart that my situation is about to reverse and change. And his it's like when mine's reverse and change to better, his reverse and change and get worse. Mm. And then I swoop in out of... Um, feeling sorry for him and go in and and get him back together but me getting him back together always leaves me back 10 steps back and lately I've been having I was having a lot of dreams about him at at one point but I have not been having a lot of dreams about him anymore I kept dreaming and kept dreaming I thought that it was something wrong with me and so Mm -hmm. I looked it up and it said like I googled it in the middle of the night like why what happens when a person dreams about someone so much and then it said either that person is thinking about you or in that person is dreaming about you but it was like the more I looked into it it can pretty much go both ways it's either yeah. you thinking about that person too much or that person is thinking about you too much but my whole thing is this is over this time I'm not going back to that I'm not going to rescue him. I can care less what situation he's in. Because I had a dream uh, last week sometime that he fell off. He lost his license because he worked for the city now. So he lost his license. He lost his, uh, he lost everything. He lost his wife. He lost his license. He lost his job. Um, He was at, at his house hungry. And lo and behold, there I was again, bringing him food. Mm. So subconsciously, you, you were trying to help him. Because so you still like we- connected. It, yeah, it was just weird because I know I'm not going to help him. And even though my family, like I told some of my family members about the dream. And they was like, you had that dream because uh, you are going to help him. You're going to help him. And I'm like. I'm not going to help them. And they was like, and that's what's going to come between you and your husband. Because every time this one, this guy get in a situation, you sneak or you throw everything and everybody under the bus and you go run and do everything possible to, to heal and help this man. And then once he's healed and you've helped him, now you're drained, you're poor, you're Mm -hmm. you don't have any money uh your spirit is all messed up you got to run back to god because uh wholeheartedly full force because now you just totally i'm totally i was totally messed up and and then it takes me a while to get back situated and it's like this is a pattern that's been going on from 14 to 41 yeah, that's a cycle. That's a cycle. That's a karmic cycle that you have to. Um, you could cut cords with a, a walnut bath. You could cut cords like that. You said a walnut bath. Yeah. 
Okay, so just put a whole bunch of walnuts in there. Well, should look it up. Look it up. Walnut bag. Water. It's like a. It's more than that. Look at um. Google it, and they'll give you like the ingredients for that. Okay, a walnut bath. Yeah, because I want, I just, I just want to be done with that situation forever. I don't and want then, to yeah. ever mm. go back to that. I don't want that cycle to remain. Mm. Um, and it's just crazy, but I post some stuff on my, I was petty. I shouldn't have did it, but I post some things on my Facebook page and he's just started blowing me up all day today then he went from that to once I posted a story like how he betrayed me so many times once he got on his feet I mean he make really good money now and I'm thinking like oh he has this job we're about to be good um he can finally take care of me mm -hmm. and as soon as he got on his feet we arguing every day we going, uh, he's not come. Some nights he's not coming home. I mean, it was just ridiculous. And then it was like, I felt like he was literally, literally doing a lot of this stuff on purpose because mm. he know that I don't think he really know, but anybody in their right mind know, like nobody who loves themselves is going to stick around and just be treated any type of way. So yeah. every time he got boastful, and got up there and got his, you know, he back on top now, riding slick, eating good, looking good. Now that he's back on top, we arguing. So I'm just, I'm tired of it. And then I just, I just hit it. I just left. And yep. um, I left everything. Mm -hmm. And that was my, me leaving is the reason why I had, I struggled because I built his home. I made his home a home. When I moved in there, it was condemned. Um, we literally ate out of bags every day, me and my whole, I left a beautiful condo that I lived in um, to go struggle with this man. And I mean, we struggled. The man didn't even have a kitchen sink, a refrigerator, a stove or anything because he was running out of money because he has a really bad spending problem. And he held on to $10,000 because he knew that he had to have some type of show for all the money that he had received because mm -hmm. he had a really huge lawsuit. So he bought this condo for $10,000 and it was condemned, like completely condemned. Me thinking like, oh, well... I won't have to pay rent because he paid cash for it. So I'm like, yeah. oh, I can just go over here, fix the house up and not pay any rent. So it was kind of rocky in the beginning because the, my money wasn't coming through as, as, as I expected it to. So I was yeah. rebuilding and fixing his house slowly. So I got the house fixed. Um, I bought him a car because his other car had broke down that he had that he bought with his little settlement money that it had broke down. So I got him another car. He finally found a job after looking for like two years and boom, he's on top. Houses looks like a home. It smells good. It feels good. Has brand new stove, washer and dryer, everything. So when no. we got into it, I moved out and I sold everything and then I left. Mm -hmm. Then he begged me to come back. I came back, replaced mm -hmm. everything that I yeah. uh, sold. And it was just, it's just crazy. Can I ask sure. you a question? Um, do you feel like you regret a lot of that stuff? Because you say you invested a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of energy. And you feel like subconsciously you feel like you want to continue and fin and reap the rewards that you put into it at one point I did it was like and I think that's where the dreams were coming from because subconsciously in my heart I've always loved and desired this man yeah and but when when I found out that you know, three months after we, after I left him, he was somewhere in Vegas getting married to a whole nother woman Person. after yeah. he just told me that he will never marry. He said he will never marry again. 
but then he switched it up and was like i'm not gonna say never and then it's just Mm -hmm. it's embarrassing for one you know people looking at it like you know she did so much for him and he ran off and married this other woman and this girl stuck by him and so it's like a lot of people around me just talking like I can't believe he did this to her some laugh and some feel sorry but yeah but yeah they do it with different people it's like I don't know I guess it's like a different vibe but don't blame yourself you gotta like kind of like forgive him and forgive yourself for and what I he have ever did. and I was blaming I have and I did have regrets at first but now that my life is switching yeah. and and it's turning around and I'm getting back on my feet, it's, it's like, I don't regret it anymore. And block I, him block him on the phone, block him on social media, block that energy out so he won't have no access to you and you won't have no access to him. Yeah, I did block him, but I had, because we do have kids together. Oh, and it was, okay. Yeah, and so I did block him at first, but it's like, dude we've been together forever like the the least we can do is be cordial we can yeah, we still family regardless of what but it's like he's using me unblocking him as a way because i i'm knowing what he wants i've been dealing with this man all my life so i know yeah, you know that he's desiring me sexually right now he don't want to uh, he don't want to have me as his woman and um, make things right with me. He wants yeah. to have his, uh, whatever his wife is, when they say cake and eat it too. No, he wants yeah, his he cake. Yeah, he both. He yeah. wants his cake and eat it too. What's his sign? What's his sign? What? He is a Capricorn, January Oh, he 11th. wants control. Yeah. He's, ja- he's January 11th and I'm Aquarius, January 29th. Mm. Yeah, he wants control. He wants, yeah, he wants to control you. He wants control of every situation. And uh, like the reason why his money is up and down because Capricorns, if they like, if I don't know, if they ain't depressed, their money goes down. If they like kind of happy, their their money goes up. So he's he's always gonna be successful without any help. It was just. He needs to really focus on himself and you should focus on yourself and not even worry about him and see he's never been successful he's not successful without a woman he used Mm. women he he's he's like the type of person who used women for money all right back back when we was younger he he was a he was he was a pimp i'm just gonna keep it ran in his family when Mm. we was younger like I say like he was in his 20s, maybe. He was like sending girls out of town to to get money. He did that for a very long time. He was in and out of jail several times. The uh the last time he was like in his 30s when he went to jail, he got out. He got mm-hmm. his little he got out, got himself together, and he never went back. But then he went back one more time. But before he went back, me and him wasn't together. But we was together before that. Okay. And like I say, he he had fell off. He and then you came in and helped him. So came uh, in, I'm going to in right here, Lashon, Lashonda. Kurt, I want you to be able to, to give a solution because I think the solution is going to be way deeper than what you can get into right now. Yeah. Because, you know, as you can say, you release someone, but like I had to do a 21 day prayer for certain things. I had to do, so this is something you're going to have to do some work on. And it's going to be hard because y'all got kids together. So you still have dealings with each other. But I'm going to let Kurt say what he has to say. But I'm going to let you know, like, I think like you and Kurt need to talk one on one, like, because it's, there's, it's you know, deep. This it's is like deeper. deeper. It's like a, it's going to be like a, you need it a transformation. Is. You need like a, a real transformation, like because this is thirty years of energy that bind it. Yes, you don't even know, you know, if your last lifetime y'all was bind. So there's a lot going on with you, and you know, 
this bath or even just a release. It's, it's more than just being like, oh, I forgive. It's, it's more to it than that. It's, it's going to take some some burning things and some screaming out loud and some, I'm, I'm a big advocate of going and letting it out and letting your heart chakra wide open and just, ah, let your pain out and stuff like that. It's going to take a lot of, to, 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 to stabilize this energy to where you're completely protected from this person. But that person is manipulative. Very yeah. manipulative. So let's say he's a vampire and, and good at it and likes it, enjoys it. You know, it's not like he's not knowing that he's doing these things. But Kurt, I'll let you talk and then we're going to. Um... But in all honesty, he don't. I don't really think he knows. I mean, he, you said he he's doesn't gone. know. He doesn't I don't, know. I really he doesn't might not know, know on the spiritual aspect. He might not understand on the spiritual aspect, but he knows who he is. You said he was a pimp, right? He <laughs> uses women. So he knows. To use people. Is, right. He knows how to use people. He might not understand on the spiritual. But it's level. crazy because most of the chicks that he was sending, well, the few chicks that he sent out of town, he connected with them. He's like, he's sort of like a lover boy but don't have the I pimp books. So I under, I under, trust me, I understand. I used to read pimp books and I understand the 48 laws of the game. Like I believe in it. It works in but business. see he it but, but people, see so I get it. But see, but he was the different type. He was the type that shamed his family because it's a part of his family. Because he got too connected and had babies by some of these women. And that's something well, yeah, you don't they sleep with their house. <laughs> I understand they that, do... but I'm gonna tell you is yeah, they do now. Get into. I'm gonna let Kurt say what he has to say. And then we're gonna because we're gonna get to some Valentine's Day stuff. Cause girl, okay. I'm telling you, we could be with you all night. We could be here all day. That's we like a session. You are already oh, know. We that's like a session. <laughs> One-on-one on one with you. That's like a session. Yeah, that's yeah, like okay. a session. One on one like, oh. We're going to have to set up a session so I can yes, see you know, the story yes, from, from yeah. the beginning all the way to the end. Beginning to the end. So mm -hmm. I want her to address what, 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 you know, you help people release. And I say get get rid of pictures, phone number, block, Facebook, get, get rid of it. But explain what, what you would think, you know, as a release. Because you also said that Walnut Bad. Walnut bath, a walnut bath, and releasing someone, you have to practice putting yourself first and showing up for yourself emotionally and kind of feeling like installing that love within yourself because you lose a part of you when you have a connection. Mm -hmm. So you're always feeling that tug of war. So once you pull your power back, and affirm that you're wanted, you are first, like your first best, like whatever treatment he did to you, you gotta reverse the treatments. And I because... think it's I think it's somewhat semi-reverse, and I think that his energy can well, feel that. He's gonna, like, yeah. feel. Answer. he's gonna gonna give you an answer like it's real simple, because this is not simple. Yeah, it okay. ain't simple. It's not simple with you. So I'm gonna let him give his answer. We're just gonna give a because because other people are watching, so we're giving them a simple instructions. Yeah, call your power back. With you, this gonna be deep with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, for this answer is like calling your power back and instilling that that self love affirmations. Like if you don't practice that now, Google or go to YouTube and put self love affirmations and um. Hoponopono um, affirmations as well. Because okay. it's going to like. The one was spelled with an H? Huh? Yeah, Hoponopono. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and sleep with that and sleep with it and goes into your subconscious mind and it and it really heals like your inner child. And okay, you said that's on YouTube, Hopono, Hopono. Send it to you. Yeah, Hoponopono. Okay, she's going to send it to me. But I yeah. think he can feel that I'm being healed a little because that's when I notice that he starts surfacing again is when I feel my strength kicking in. Mm. I don't know. That sounds like some twin flame action too. So we're going to save that for our one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for my one-on-one. -on -one. I just wanted to let you know that like, I have been doing a lot of self stuff and self-love and I mm -hmm. feel my strength kicking in and I feel that's why he's coming back around. He gonna need to come back if you allow him back. 
true, but I'm not going to. Yeah. All right, I'm done. You guys can continue. And self love. So I'll put, I'll even put that on the live comment. The Hapono Pono. This is one you could sleep and listen to it while you sleep. I like listening to um, affirmations while you sleep. Ugh, did I get lost? Thanks so much, no. guys. Okay. You're welcome. Don't leave us. All right. So let, let's talk about. It's gonna be Valentine's Day. Some people. Mm, some people about to get ready. Some people are getting ready. And some people, maybe they'll be disappointed, but maybe they want, <laughs> I don't know. How do you get ready? <laughs> How you get ready for a person? Ready for this Valentine's Day. Um, you know, because I feel like, you know what happens. I don't know if you've ever been stood up on a date or you have these high expectations of what's going to happen. And then eh, it doesn't quite work out. Mm. If it doesn't, or you could do if so how you get ready and not have expectations for it. Yeah, well, you better, how, do, how do you prepare your heart for a good Valentine's Day? What would you say? Buy some nice stuff for yourself. Get some get some nice, you know, oils and get some nice scents and love on yourself and do yourself up and be ready to, to go out and be with that person, even if they don't show up. Be ready to go and take yourself out. And how you prepare your heart for that? Yeah. You, I don't know. New. All right, here's a tip. Here's a tip for people. We're in a new relationship. It's brand here's a tip. new. You don't really know if they're even going to ask you out for Valentine's. You don't really know if you're going to get a present. It's just new. All right, for the new ones, for I would. New. For the brand new. See, for the new ones, you got to send something. For the new ones, then. Yeah. Well, a, a new one. I'm sending one on. I'm sending it. I'm sending like flowers. I'm sending like um, fruit. I'm sending it something because mm. you, if you show an empty handed, I'm like that's kind of like uh, like what are you doing? <laughs> I would send something the, the day before and the day of. Like mm -hmm. I would do start. I do a lot of things. I would do um, something. Like guys, if you're doing if you're doing it for the woman, I'll do I'll get her something for her mind, I'll get something for her heart, and I'll get something for her physical that she can wear. Like so, you'll get an outfit, you'll get like a book or something, and you'll get like jewelry that she can wear. So, you have all three. You all oh, right? Hey, Eric. Yeah, you gotta think. You gotta like write that like, down. Spice it up. <laughs> You gotta like do surprises. Like I would be like, oh, go here or go where we first met or um, I don't know, go in the park or like, I don't know, like surprises, like at the job. Is this being recorded? Cause I needed yes, to write is. that down. Yes, oh, yeah. it is. Okay. Yeah, if, if your guys are not doing this, I don't know. <laughs> Putting folks to shame. Nah, I don't right, know. So been. But everybody don't think like me, but yeah, I would do something like whatever they're interested in. I'll take them to the, I'll take them to a new place, like a new restaurant or a new experience, something new, especially like on the first one, the first go around, I would make it special because that's like your first. Yeah, I would do something like whatever they're interested in. I'll take them to the, I'll take them to a new oh. place. Oops. Oh, Blake, can you like? Yeah. Cool. So you've been dating for a while. Um, don't live together, but dating maybe for a year or two. A year or two? Mm -hmm. Then we go into a uh, expensive restaurant. We go into like a hop at like, you know, like expensive things. Like that's when you step it up, you know you get like clothes or you get like whatever you want to feel special. If you're going for like two years or three years, you know, mm -hmm. like you gotta get more creative. Mm -hmm. You could even, um, I would write a, a letter, I would write a poems like up to that date and then uh, do something to that date. You know, it's different things of that nature. Like how do you feel about that person? 
So is that the right time? Um, I saw one couple, well, it was on their anniversary, they were doing a, 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 a like a review, like a, they were sitting what? There kind of going over, these are the things that I've enjoyed about our relationship. They were doing kind of like a, an assessment, an update type thing. Mm -hmm. I think you talked about that last time too. Yeah, like a, um, it's like a weekly thing, like an update, like oh, okay. this is what I don't like, like a, um, I forgot what, what I called it. It's like an update, like, all right, is this like a, check is up. this good? A checkup, yeah, okay. like a light checkup. You talk like, oh, this is bothering me and this is good. And, you know, little things that you don't want to build up on, like you could do that, but, cause when things do build up and people are not cruises, honest. Though? When should we be planning cruises? Cause there's a certain time when it's like, you know, by now we should be going on cruises. We should be doing some real stuff. Yeah, cruises and going to trips and what kind of lifestyle, like getting passports, um, going flights, um, doing fun things like beaches, um, like you said, cruises, vacation getaways. Mm -hmm. You go to villas, get a villa, um, or just randomly get up and drive and take a road trip. Cause that's that's really if you want to um, test if you really could stay in the person if you really love the person <laughs> if y'all could be in the car for like hours and not like you know be there because some people are in a relationship and they're not living together so they don't know if the person how that is so oh these intermittent is really it's a lot you know it's it's very easy to. <laughs> To hang out every couple of weeks or hang yeah. out, you know, it's it's too easy. It's too easy. You can stretch that relationship out, you know, for three years or, you mm -hmm. know, even longer and not even realize how much time passed because you guys don't live together. Yeah. Yeah. But once you go on vacations and get away and do fun things like, um, I don't know, rock climbing or like do adventurous things. Don't I gotta get stuck you. in routine, huh? I got a good one for you. Should you ever date the same person twice? I used to think like, never. Mm, if they change, cause there's a reason why you broke up. Mm -hmm. People always look to appear to, to change though, but. I won't, I don't know if I could date the same person twice. I don't know. That's like, um, I, I, the feeling changed. The feelings changed. Well, the, yeah, and you changed too while you were in there. Yeah, and I changed. I outgrew that person. I'm like, all right, I see you differently now. I, I'm not the same person. I, my my feelings changed. It, it, and then I, I, then you always think, why we broke up? Why this? Why that? Especially if you're not over it. Right. So anybody on here, Kurt was doing some, some love readings the other day. Well, what cards were you using? What cards? Oh, that was the Moonology cards. Oh, uh, yeah, I did notice all of them had a moon on it. So I was going to open it up to let anybody, like, um, if you had a, another question about your Valentine's Day, if you want to ask them about your Valentine's Day, what you should expect, or if you, you know, um, just, or what your sign is, like what you're expecting. And he could do a, 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 a quick moon reading for you. For mine, mine is Scorpio. So mm. you, no, mine's not Scorpio. Let me guess, let me tell you something. For 46 years, I thought I was a Scorpio. <laughs> well, you almost did, you're a cuss. I you know, almost did. but I was born at two in the afternoon. So then I was told that I'm like, no, you had the 99th degree. So then I found out like I'm a Libra, so. I still get stuck saying you still got you got you a cuss. You got both. Oh, okay. You got both energies. Ah. And brother L. Uh, yeah, I'm down for this. Okay, you down for this. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. I've been I've been wanting somebody to do it. And you'll be well, the first let, person, man. I'll let brother L do it. They do his um Tuesday, March. You need to just my birthday, right? Of course. I don't need your birthday. I just got the cards. Okay, okay, go oh, again. Okay. But what's your sign? Oh, Pisces. Oh, that's why you're spiritual because you really connected. Oh yeah. Can't help you. It. Yeah, you're deeply connected. Like you 
you um you manifest a lot of things like your dream realm is you like oh wow you're like the walking shaman because <laughs> people come to you it's like that's why people come for you for healing because you are a healer and you could do music as well like artists and don't don't be in the background be in the forefront I like usually being in the background, the hype man. Oh. I don't necessarily need to be that number one guy. Okay. But that's just, but how, I that's just how I feel. But I, I, I see what you're saying. Because that part of that last part you said, especially me coming to the forefront, is, a, is something I greatly learned about myself recently. Mm -hmm. He's ready. Like, um, like, even in the forefront is like, you could, um, give credit for your artwork or get credit for your work or like say I did this like yeah I, I did that you know okay okay because the the opposite of Pisces is Virgo so you're gonna want to um, put some thinking to your stuff as well like strategic when you creating things you want to use some logic as well. Because I know it could get hundred percent agree. Do you do uh, birth charts as well? Yeah, I do birth charts, like the moon That's signs and the. Yeah, can I? Um, so obviously, yeah, Pisces. Um, March twelfth, nineteen eighty four. That's something. You oh, you could send me that. One on one, so he can get that for you. I'm gonna give put his link in here for you. Yeah, because I'm going to look up your, your your chart and do you know it? your moon sign or no? My moon sign. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'm um, rising Sag and moon Sag as well. Mm. Oh, okay. So you love adventures. You love um, studying too. You love like knowledge. You just love someone who likes knowledge and feeds you knowledge and but you're more of an explorer to find knowledge you go on your way to um, find it you don't like nobody feeding it to you kind of like adventure you gotta like search for it dead on man dead on that's how i've been feeling this yeah. th that this urge i need to get up and i need to get out of here i need to move somewhere completely some be somewhere else like meditating or or whatever somewhere and on, on the other side of the world man that's all i've been feeling for the last few years yeah you gotta do it now do it now do it now because i pulled emotions are running high right now and it's time to um move on your emotions move on what you're feeling like just do it just go out and just do it Go to the mountains, go to the beaches, go to nature. Cause I feel that's your your place, that's your your zone. Mm, my zen place. Yeah. By the I, water, by the water, by the beaches, by the water. That's, yeah, that's on man. That's yeah. good. That's that's good. You real good. Yeah. <laughs> So I think someone opened up their mic. Ugh, uh -huh. someone did. Um, is Beth, did you wanna give him your sign or LaShonda? No, I'm just listening today. Oh, okay, you, 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 you okay. In the, you're in the back today. <laughs> in the back today. Yes, ma'am. Okay, then LaShonda, did you wanna do your sign? She might be doing something. So mine might is be doing something. Libra. Oh, there she go. I see her. It's Aquarius. Oh, yeah, that's right. Aquarius. Aquarius. Emotions yeah, they need <laughs> they they need the um they need that intellectual um kind of connection to be stimulated. We sure gonna... do. <laughs> you sure do. Like y'all need it. Or because that's why they kind of run away from relationships because if that person's not feeding them or keep 
stimulating their mind. They just disconnect and they don't love normal. Like don't, don't try to fit into other people's love languages. If y'all want more than one person, go for that. That's what a care Aquarius does. They don't love like other people. Their love is like unique. So you're gonna feel incomplete if you try to fit society's love language and like, oh, you need to marry this person, That's but you're still thinking about someone else and you're like, wait, that doesn't feel right. But it feel right to you because you can make how you got two people. There's no laws against that. You can have two people if you want. That's why some people go out and cheat or feel like they not they not whole, they not their authentic self because they not really being their authentic self. That's the Aquarius. I guess that was true. I can't handle two people. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably want more than one connection, though. You got more than one connection. Less involved. Yeah, that's why I stuck with just that one for so long because I mm. can't. I can't do two people. I can't do two people. Um, mm -mm. I can't do two people. Yeah, that's why I stuck with just one. And I felt bad just sticking with one when I'm seeing everybody else sticking with several and having a whole lot more fun than I was. Yeah, it's like you 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 want it, but then you like, mm, can I handle it? Like, you kind of want to dive into my, it. I think it's my OCD, so mm. that's why. Mm. I I know I wouldn't be able to handle it because of my OCD, but it's like I always said, like if I end up with some, I'm gonna know where I where it came from something i mean it's just that i can honestly say it was that ocd but mm -hmm. if i could i would be with my ex and my husband mm -hmm. but and i think deep down you probably want it but you don't it's like you at this point i'm so over i'm so over the ex dude because he done went and got married on me this is his second marriage since we mm. uh since we've been knowing each other, I don't want to have nothing else to do with that guy ever again. It's like my crazy husband, he is like three men in one. So Oh, that's I'm, good. I'm cool with that. You're good with that. Yeah, he, he's like literally, he's like three. That's why we that's why I divorced him because he was just too much for me. He was like over, he was obsessive overly protected and then he was insecure he was insecure mm. about my first love so oh. we bumped heads constantly because he would have dreams that i'm with my ex and it's like one thing about me if i'm with you that's who i'm with not right. with nobody else none of that but he couldn't deal with it it ate him up really bad to the point where it forced it, him to be suicidal but it's like why would you hook up with me if you know that I have a, a, you know, that I feel some type of a way about the person who I gave my virginity to and mm -hmm. that we had, so, you know, we had a long relationship. So eventually it started eating away at him and he became abusive and got crazy and obsessed. And yeah. to, I mean, literally if he had to follow me to the bathroom, that's what he would have did. That's but kind of crazy. Him, what was his yeah. sign? Wait, what was his sign? He is the other C. What's the other C? He is a cancer. Oh, yeah. He's he's insecure about his emotions. Yeah. And he he yeah he he's really insecure, and he's controlling. Like I don't know. Yeah. Very controlling. controlling. <laughs> Very controlling. Had a huge temper problem. But he loves really, really hard. Like yes. everything in him is what I wanted in the other guy. Like he opened doors. If I couldn't walk, he'll carry me. He'll mm. feed me. He'll bathe me. He'll whatever. He'll take care of the whole entire family. He'll go work 24 hours a day, come home and give his whole check to me. All he want out of it is a couple of dollars to get him something to drink or get him cancer? His yeah, he's a cancer. 
Yeah, I'm a cancer. That's why I know that energy. He's really, really loving. Like, really. Yeah. really I mean, yeah. romantic. He has the other guy. His sex is uh not that good, but my husband, <laughs> it's like. That's when I told him, like, mm -mm, this too nasty. We're going to have to get married. I can't. Oh, uh -oh. I'm not about to go to hell for this one right here. So. Uh-oh. <laughs> they might be watching now. Who knows? So it was like, that's why I married him. And because of how he was, like, so romantic. He can kiss, like, oh, he, he can kiss really good. Like, you don't <laughs> even have to. That's as far as it can go. It's like. That's how awesome he is with kissing. But yeah, the yeah. other guy is like, the only reason why I felt him is because of the love that I have for him, but he could never satisfy me. Mm -hmm. I satisfied myself because of how I felt about him and just knowing him inside of me mm -hmm. gave me some type of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Who but that second one? <laughs> oh, I tell you, it was some, 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 something from heaven. <laughs> don't, don't give up too much details here. Good lord, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> yes, it was like something I've never experienced. And he's like a couple of years younger than I am. I had to ask him, like, have you been molested or something? Because I've oh. never had nothing like this before. Never. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. <laughs> Girl. I'm so Tell you, <laughs> to be fine and it sore. Seems like those are the ones that's crazy though they mm -hmm. got all the attributes to be the greatest man ever but got but super crazy yeah that's true that is true that's crazy. I mean, he didn't let me pump no gas. If I ran out of gas, he'd be like, where you located at? Don't you go mm. to no gas station mm. and put them beautiful hands on no gas pump. Ooh. You know, I got a kiss on those hands and stuff. So I'd be like, I'm about to, I'm like, you far. I'm, I'm not finna sit. Like, no, I'm right around the corner. I'm on my way. I'm finna come pump your gas. And that's mm. the part that I felt was controlling because I'm so independent. And it yeah, was like he's controlling the situation. That's over the top. Yeah. That's yes. controlling. I mean, he's like, that's I don't controlling. Know, it's so many germs on those pumps. So he make it sound so good. Like, yes. Let me come watch you. Uh, he's controlling, but he's but that's manipulation. That's manip that's what like, I'm saying. It's like catch you it. fall for it because it's like you fall for it because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, that's so sweet. He don't want me to touch the pump. Mm -hmm. No. No, so he's it's like an underhand stuff. He wants stuff. to see if you're alone. That's what he wants. Yeah, to under underhand stuff though. Because mm -hmm. let's say if you're getting a fight or something, like those are the people. Like you ain't go nowhere. You gotta mm -hmm. watch out. Mm -hmm. You gotta watch out for these people who are like that because they turn into stalkers, and they will never let you go. Mm -hmm. They will never. Oh let yeah, you go. he was a stalker. That's why see? I had to. That's why I had to divorce him. He was a stalker. He was obsessed. The you man like would that. have a dream that I cheated and will wake up and tear up the whole entire That's crazy. House. That's crazy. Like, the That's crazy. Like a narcissist. Narcissist. But see, I, I once I, because we've been broken up for five years because he's been locked up for four and a half years. Oh. And um, so once I realized the reason why he, he switched up and got real angry is because he knew he was going to jail and that I was going to be out here by myself with my first love. Mm. So that's when, that's when I, that's when thing, the tables in our relationship began to shift. And when okay. he started having these crazy dreams and started acting crazy, it's because he knew that he was about to go to jail because he got caught with a gun and um he's a felon so when he got caught with a gun oh, he he I got pulled away for five yeah. years and so the whole time while he's fighting his case he's thinking like i'm about to lose my wife to her first love because you can't you can't compare you can't compete with time that's his that's something he always will say I'm mm -hmm. like but i'm your wife i married you there's no yeah he, he's there. still on that old thing yeah, he was so who killed. you with now? I'm back with I rec I'm reconciling back with my husband and we're gonna work things out. We've been communicating the last two years 
And um, we're going to make, probably make it official once he's free and I see that he's not crazy and he's taking some psychological courses in, in jail and he can got seek some help. But I just come to the realization that hopefully he's older now, wiser. And, you know, we talk about a lot of stuff. I even tell him the things that the, my ex is doing right now. And I can see a change because before okay. he before he cared and he would just go ballistic. Now it's like you just gonna have to pray for him. Mm. Um, that don't bother me because I know I trust you. I, I will never do anything to That's lose good. you ever again. He said he had an outer body experience. When oh, he, he was bought spiritual up. now. Yeah, he said he got when he got locked up, he tried to kill himself. When he got situated in there, he tried to commit suicide. Um, they was they tried to give him medication because he refused to eat, and because he refused to eat, yeah. he um he slowly drifted off into a dream. And he said, well, he said he believed it was an out of body experience, and God just showed him all the people who he had hurt it, oh, wow. and he was like, and you was one of the persons that that God put before me and I really really hurt you and he was like it was just so deep like some of the stuff that he was talking about and it was like he was just his whole focus while he was in jail that kept him surviving was that I got to get my life together because when I get out of here I'm fighting and I'm getting my wife back because I love mm. her and I can't lose her and so I didn't do nothing for him while he was in jail. He suffered. He didn't That's have good. no money coming in. He didn't have no phone calls. He didn't have no, I didn't put no money on his books. I just went cold turkey. And it was like for literally four years, just mm. cold turkey. Didn't communicate with him. In the beginning when he was like in the county jail, I did. But once he got shipped off and that divorce was final, I cut him off completely and he That's realized good. what he lost and he's at this point now where I had it all. I had my wife, I had her kids because my kids don't even like their daddy, but they love their stepdad because mm -hmm. they know he was good to them and he was good to me, but they was just like, he just a little too crazy for us. Like other than that, mama, we know he loved you because I got the permission to I asked them, like, what would they think if me and him was to get back together and they okayed it. Okay, that's good. I mean, yeah, that's good. But that's I told him, he'd get out, he get clowning, I'm just going to kill him. That's just bottom line. <laughs> just that's a 360. You did the card already and you did the card? Oh, I was the one in the story. There's no cards for that. <laughs> <laughs> she know. Oh, so we're not saying for you, but I mean, sometimes I think we get in a routine of dating the same people. I used to do that. Like you go through your phone and you're like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you kind of reminisce and kind of stay in the same place. Like, I mean, do you, what do you think about that? Because it, it seems like sometimes we, we have to make bridges. We have to go out of our way sometimes to make new friendships and relationships. We could create new people. All right, now I'm going to get into the manifestation. I'm going to get into some deep stuff here. I'm, not, I'm, I'm getting not, some deep stuff. Yeah, I'm not advising her on your particular situation, but... Oh, no, 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 no. Just, not oh, that situation. No, it's about in general. Yeah, I know I used to do that. Like, no, I'm talking about we can... We, like, there are billions of people... We never, you can never run out of people. You can't run, run, you can't run out of people. No matter if they leave you, there's always some new energy. There's always some new people that will that will come in and make your life better or have a better connection. So that's where our mindset has to be when we when we deal with the same people. Mm -hmm. We think in a, in a lack, mm. but. When you think of abundance and that you are love, and no matter where you go, love follows. That's when you can let new people in and actually be open to new people. Because sometimes people, we could be afraid of letting new people in. Because because when we deal with other people or like bad things, we doubt ourselves. We doubt our judgment. Like. 
I pick these people, like, am I able to pick someone new to Ooh, be better or it might be the same? Yeah. Like, right. our judgment is like, can we, like, subconsciously, I, I'm like, we, we like, dang, can we let someone in? Because they might do this, they might do that. And we're not thinking from a high, higher way of looking at it. Because it's all about how you see yourself, how you treat yourself. And what you allow is how you see yourself. So if I'm allowing a woman to treat me bad, I see myself as bad. Mm. That's why I really don't go backwards if it was like mistreatment or some disrespect there because I'm going back to the disrespect. I'm not thinking really in my self-love. I'm not really thinking that I can get someone else, which you can. Yeah, true. It, it, it gets to that, it's the mindset of it. I like what you said the other day about setting space, like you create space for the person. Yeah, we, you got to create the space for the person. You got to create a routine for the person and create um, like love for that person, like create that space. Like, like I said, you could have a, a king size bed or queen size bed and have a drawer for them and have like a setup for them, like act like they, they're there. That's how you really manifest someone. Like if you really know in your heart that someone's going to be with you and your routine is with that person. Yeah, my- like at the refrigerator or at, like, a, do you have space for in the driveway? Do you have a big up? Do you have big space for them? Are you going to be selfish or are you going to be openly by openly receiving and accepting someone? Mm-hmm. So Gidge, did you have um did you have are you gonna do a reading, Gidget? Oh look at you out in the Yeah, I guess. I, I, I am. I am. I'm walking the dog. I'm just listening me, mainly. I don't know. I, um, I, I wasn't, I, I had to leave because I had a phone call. But um, I'm just listening, I guess, for now. But I don't know. How, how does that reading work? You need a birthday? I'll or? pull a card. No, I'll pull a card for her. Pull a card? Yeah. I'm here. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, he's looking at him. Oh, look. Oh, it says, take time, take time to breathe out. So, you may need, you may take time for yourself, take time for yourself to actually breathe, to actually relax and not always be working and not always be busy in other things. So yes. this is a card for like, exhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Like you could let things be and not hyperventilate and you know, like worrying, worrying. And like you're holding your yes. breath for something, like holding your breath for something to happen or for other people. So this is about, this is about putting yourself first. Put yourself first. True. True. Yeah. I liked it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, like right now, like I'm just like running, running, always constantly doing something for somebody else and not for me. Yeah. Yeah. I need time for me. Thank you. Time. You're welcome. But we say that, but and yet we still we get the advice and we say that, but we still never take we time still, for yeah. ourselves. Because we're so used to running and taking care of others, it's like any advice that we get, we totally forget to actually use to it. Action. So, so you, have to it. Actually, you have to make sure that you set time and actually take that advice because I'm telling you, I I, I feel you. Take it. Take it. I Apply it. I wanted to ask you, Curtis, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh-huh. I wanted to ask you a question, man. Um, the the card that you pulled for me the moon is that only pertaining just for birthday or is that just like you was just something random you just pulled just for me 
Oh, how I, does it, I don't know how it, I know cards work like kind of how they work, but how did you do it? What made you? Is it, was it just straight off the birthday? Oh no, it was straight off of intuition. Okay. It was with the card, but yours was it was well, intuition. Because okay. I, I knew you are Sag- Sagittarius, so I kind of knew your sign, and I knew the kind of energy you, you um, hold. So it's based off the sign as well, because that's your personality. It's just the energy that you have. Okay. Is there anything more to that moon card? That any more information you have you have on that? Oh, that moon card that I pulled. Yes, please. Well, that was the car- I could pull another card. Okay. Do, okay. I. I. What, yeah. The, do it the right way, man. You do. You. You know. <laughs> he, he knows. He knows. He knows. <laughs> I, I should ask him to bring back the card. That my. Yeah, phone. you can't bring yeah, back the card. You no, can't bring back the card. No, just. Go off for the go off for the spirit, man. The vibe. Yeah, because the the cards they they're connected to the spirits. Yeah. Okay, look, I pulled, I I randomly pulled your moon sign, Sagittarius. So whatever you're going through right now, you got to look at the bigger picture, and not what's like not the details of what's going on you gotta see the bigger picture the end of it and you gotta um not be bothered with personal things like whatever is like going on you gotta see like the end goal so when you see the bigger picture you see the whole thing for what it is and you kind of take your emotions out of it so you don't make terrible decisions on what's in front of you So take your time to actually analyze everything that's going around you before you make any decisions. You gotta take yourself out the situation to actually handle the situation. Okay. Like your higher self, like your higher self from that standpoint. Okay. Thank you, man, appreciate that. You're welcome. Oh, I wanna be next. I wanna be next. I wanna be next. All right. Okay, you got new, well, I guess this new moon in Aquarius, you gotta um, bring love into your situation that you're in now, like, Whatever situation you're in now, you gotta do it with love and from love and not from a space of worry or scared or lack. Cause this energy is about transformation. This energy is about even putting love into what you do. I do what you love. Like you might not like, you might not like what you're doing right now. So you gotta do what you love and be surrounded by the people you love. So you could be loved. So you not in some um, stagnant energy, because it's all about it's all about being in love and going after your dreams. Because you might held off on a lot of stuff, so things are coming true, things are real, and accept it. Allow whatever coming to you, whatever good is coming to you, is not too good to be true. It's for you, so. Be ready for it. Okay, so it's funny you said that. I am an Aquarius. And mm. I just did um I I'm gonna say I did a 360. Mm-hmm. I was following money. This is crazy. I was following money in a area that I hate, basically. Yeah. Because yeah. I've been doing it for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And I hate it. So while I was in a different state, um, I experienced something that was like, okay, you know what? I can't do this no more. And I just came back home to Orlando Sunday Mm -hmm. where I literally just said, fuck everything and came down here. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm looking for to get in a career that I actually love. Mm 
Mm. not just I'm doing it just for the finances because at the end of the day I've always been taken care of meaning yeah. like spirit God however I want to say yeah. have always taken care of me so I never lack for nothing so mm. why stay where you're not happy I don't like yeah. people and people feel it's not for me anymore so I'm looking mm -hmm. more in the business front. actually with my background in business and stuff. So yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Now the love department, I kind of well, <laughs> well you could just bring you could just be the love, like bring accept the joy, accept the new like accept the love for yourself. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be romantic. Like when we think ro love is more than romantic, it's actually fulfilling your soul like your soul feels that love, like you are love. So whatever you're doing that brings you that joy is love. So it doesn't have to be romantic. It could just be your favorite things or doing it for you. That's the love. Gotcha, gotcha. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I guess she, she's, um, I had to use the touch screen, my hands wet. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so mine was Libra. Libra on the cusp. On the cusp, Scorpio. <laughs> ah, good, in a way good. I was kind of looking forward to that new Libra not being labeled because Scorpio is labeled. It's got a bad label. Libra is a label too. Libra, yeah, 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 decisive. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. I don't like people asking, where do you want to go and eat? Unless I definitely am like, dang, I really want this. I'm, I'm like, don't ask me. Yeah, you don't like you. I don't want to decide what to cook. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> it's yeah. better than less choices. I don't want to choose what channel to watch. Like I, I watch the same thing over and over because I don't I don't like having to flip through and find something new. <laughs> Too much. That's too much. That's too much. <laughs> Libra life. Libra life. <laughs> Look, I, I pulled the card for you. I pulled, are terrible. I pulled the card for you. It's a time for healing. Mm. Time for healing. A time for healing. It's for me. Focus on that self love. Be on that self love game. All right. Ooh. Like this healing, there's different levels of healing. I think I need hands for this headache. Like, <laughs> for a headache to heal a headache, yeah. just be like, you got, you could literally say, "I'm healed," like, because we, our words are powerful. Oh yeah. And when we have a uh, sickness, we focus on the sickness. Mm. We don't say, "I am healed." Like we don't say, "I'm healed." We say, "I'm." Sick. You know that, yeah. So you stay, you stay in that in that vibration. Mm, I am. So here. if you revert, if you like, um, if you, it, it works because I do it all the time. Mm. Like I haven't been sick for like, I don't, I can't remember. Mm. I can't remember being sick. Like, and if something do come like a little bit, i be like, I'm healed, I'm healed, and then it just go away. Wow. I mean, it's like it's like a practice. It's like you gotta know it. It's a, it's really a mindset. Like psychic surgery, huh? Like psychic surgery. Yeah, like, psychic. I imagine yeah. Like, here's I'm I'm wiping it away. I'm erasing. Yeah, I'm erasing. like I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. Yeah. I'm healed. Like, yeah. Yeah, I believe that because when if I get like little pains that's very irritating, the more I think about it, the more it hurts. And the pain gets worse. But the minute I shut my brain down and not think about that pain um, and confess the healing, yeah. like, oh, no, I'm not hurting. I'm not hurting. It goes away and it just instantly just disappear. Yep. But sometimes them headaches, I try, but sometimes I just have to go to sleep and wake up. Um, sometimes they'll disappear. Sometimes they don't. But um, I'll, I don't take medication. Mm. for nothing sometimes though those headaches are like um you know like spiritual things trying to communicate 
and we not letting that in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like because we do communicate with spirits, but we block that out sometimes. Uh, yeah, we've learned to ignore ourselves so much. So this was awesome. Um, crew, um, why am I, I'm about to say cruise. <laughs> cruise. You want to go on a cruise? That's why. I do because I've said it twice now, but Kurt will be with us um, March 19th through the 22nd. I'm going to go ahead and put that up on the screen. March 19th to the 22nd. So we can do this divine healing. So you're going to do some love alchemy there. Do you know what, like particularly what you're going to talk about there? Or like you're going to do some- Oh, I'm going to be talking about um, self-healing and self-love and like how to cut off people, how to really master yourself energetically. Because it's all about mastering your energy with relationships, with self-love with changing your reality, with uh, manifesting. I'm be touching on a lot of those things. Right. So that's gonna be awesome. Um, the, the big thing too, don't don't wait for somebody to buy you something. Oh yeah, buy yourself don't, something. Don't don't wait for people to take you out. Be, be strong enough to go to restaurants and be alone. Cause while you're out there, that's when you might meet that person that you were looking for. And that's- Look, what, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing I, this this Sunday. I'm taking myself out. I might go. I might go out tomorrow because I might not want to go with when everybody goes out. I'm gonna go like the day before. Yeah. Yeah. Always do the day the day before. All right. Here's a here's a tip. Like, don't wait till Valentine's Day to do something special. Do it every when you feel like it. You know. Yeah. Do little things. You know. So we already posted, um, we posted the link to your site and then um, that, I don't know how to pronounce it, Haloponopono. Haloponopono? Yeah. Are you, you forgiven? You're, you're really, with that, you're forgiven yourself and you're forgiven a lot of the things that happen. And it's now, not when I looked fault. it up, it said it was the most powerful. It is. Uh, you got to like got to really be in it you gotta like really do the work okay and like be dedicated i might sleep with that tonight <laughs> yeah and yeah. it's like a repeating the words i'm telling you like that because i heal in like you could heal your dreams and once you feel that love and with nobody else is loving you that's the power right there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like today i woke up like feeling love and i was not with no one and that's right. like power right there. Cause you don't need no one. You're like, oh, you good. That is good. That is good. Cause a lot of people, yeah. even in a relationship you're up and down because you got to start with you loving you. Then it doesn't matter so much. You're not thrown off so much being, you know, reacting to the people around. Yeah, and you're more, and you're more secured. You're more self-secured. You're not worrying about if they're cheating or if they're doing anything or they with someone, or they not give you enough time, or they didn't do this at this moment, or they didn't show up for you at that moment, because a lot of people got like these things that are really stem from their insecurities. Like, oh, they didn't text me um, Grand Rising, or they didn't text me I love you at this moment or that moment. It's like they're keeping tabs on what? the things that don't matter. Like, I'm like, say that to yourself. Like, I don't need a reassure you of the love i'm like nah, reassure yourself and be to the point where and be to the point where if they leave it's okay and we had that experience and you're not running and chasing you're like okay because you, you're always showing up for yourself and you're basically using the other person's i love you as an affirmation i never thought of it that way oh as a yeah, you can, yeah. I love you as an affirmation, but you can do your own affirmation. You could be like, I love myself. Like, I am love. I, I am love. Like, I, am love. I love myself. Um, I'm secured. I, I'm i first best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of things. That's cool. Well, I'm thanking you all for hanging out with us. And we're going to end the live stream now. All right. All right, so I'm in the live stream, and gee whiz, we're gonna um, 
we're going to end for you all. And Kurt and I are going to have a little meeting. Um, Brother L, did you have something you wanted to say to Kurt before you go? Or Oh, uh, no, you were great, man. You were thank great. You. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every minute of it, man. Thank you. Thank and you, I appreciate you. the reading again very much. You're welcome. I think Kurt was like the spirit of a baby. So you like a little Cupid baby or something. Yeah, yeah it's like you were little, you were surrounded by women and they were all grabbing you on the cheeks and kissing you. And... Yeah. Uh, I was born on a Friday as Venus Day. So <laughs> all right. Wait, wait, I got one 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 quick question. Speaking of the days. So I was born on two a Tuesday. What, what, I know Tuesday's what? What is that? The moon is Monday. Tuesday was that Mercury? Yeah, Tuesday like Mercury. Tuesday's Mercury. So it's okay. like communication. That only makes sense in my throat chakra. Communication, yeah, that's your strong point. Thank you. Just wanted to, I need to, I just wanted some confirmation. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, ladies, did you have anything for Kurt? Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. You're welcome. Um, okay, let's see. Everybody's gone. All right. Ooh. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like booting them out this time. So that was cool. How do you feel about it? That was good. That was like a session. Oh my God, I was kind of nervous. Like, oh, she's telling too much. I get so nervous when people tell all their business. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, um, I had to interject like, oh uh, yeah, you tell her a lot. I'm like, but she's an Aquarius, so they talk a lot. They tell it all, like she needs- She's like Shalom and she was just saying whatever. And it's like, I'm not worried about it. Okay, so this is probably why me and my mom don't get along. Okay, guys. She's Aquarius, they, they, they take over. They take over if you let them, they take over. Yeah, yeah, just imagine. I couldn't get a word in when I was younger. That's why I'm like really aggressive about speaking now because I was like, and then too, if I would talk, like she would like, you get popped mm. in the mouth and stuff like that. So. I was suppressed, so I know like now I'm more like if somebody's trying to suppress me, I'm like rah, like no, nah, you're mm -hmm. not gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, a little psycho in a bottle. So <laughs> that was a good that was a good session because it it kind of it kind of viewed what what people go through, you know, like people can hear like what people go through. And, and then I think, the, you know, I really feel like if somebody finds this on the YouTube that, you know, you, you can really build a following on that. Are, are you on YouTube yet or? I've been on YouTube. But like I, mean, I teach people manifesting and um, um, love and stuff like that. Right. How many, how many people you got on your channel? My channel is so weak. I'm just so like, so just starting. So. Oh, I only have like 200 and something. Wow, you're way ahead of me though. So, I mean, that's that's awesome. I think now yeah. is the time. Are you using good hashtags or? Yeah, I found the, I found topics that are catching, catching wind. So cool. I just keep at it. Cool, same thing here, same thing here. So. My um, goal is a thousand. Right, then we could go live on it. You know, I thought about it. If if all of us got together and did a channel, like we would gain enough followers with different topics that we could get to a thousand faster. Because that um the Nubian site, I noticed that the ladies on the Nubian, like Vicky Dillard and all them, I don't know what was it called, the Nubian. Fly Nubian Queen site. So it's like five of them and they'll do their shows at different time and they have enough people to go live. And I feel like a part of it is because it's five different people, you know, merging together. So yeah, well, it depends on the top, it depends on the topics, it depends on the audience, it depends on a lot of things. Because to get started, it it does take dedication. It does, it does. Like you gotta like post every almost like some people did it post every day, but they only do like five minutes until they get to a certain point. Mm. And it, it's just pulling up topic. So um. yeah. Well, I'm working on my abilities, so I'm gonna I have to choose the time to start 
after I what, see what what topics you have on your channel. Oh, for, for now, like I do what's called the Mozone and I interview different business owners. So if you're a um, a life coach, a counselor, um, I've done Shalom, I've done um, different people, different authors, so different writers. We got together, one of them, we did a thing called the Writer's Block and I interviewed like six different writers. One time we did um, a watch party for the, a listening party for the Wiz. We talked mm -hmm. about the music and how it's, you know, relates to real life and stuff. So I just do off the wall stuff. Mm. You know, well, lately I'm getting more off the wall ideas because I'm, you know, I'm hanging out with you guys. So <laughs> I'm doing yeah, 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 yeah. stuff. There's more social. It's and kept, yeah. Business. It's like find out what works. And, and once you find what works, you ride that wave. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think it's time. But um, I don't know. I don't know if you if you want to do it on Sunday. Let me know. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna let you know because yeah. I don't. Because I was kind of disappointed. It was not that many people today. So people it's, are. It's Friday night, I guess. So probably it's Friday night. They gonna catch the replay, no matter. Yeah, that's true. They gonna um, watch it. Probably gonna see some. You know, probably watching some college sports or something. I don't know. <laughs> mm. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Some people don't like jumping on. Some people don't like being on here. Yeah, it's scary for them. A lot of people are not, well, they not, you know. Yeah, but this is a dedicated little group. I see this is the same people keep coming back now. So, and I mean, to have six- It just catch traction. It just catch- Yeah. I like interacting with people like this. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Okay, yeah. well, just let me know about Sunday and I'm gonna go lay down. I do feel like I'm starting to feel better. Um, All right. But I appreciate it, and I thank you so much. Looking thank you for having me. I did all right. You set it up real good. Well, huh? You set it up. You be setting up real good. Thanks. And love is a good topic, so. <laughs> yeah, love is a is a good topic. Yeah. So have a good night. Thanks. You too.